Right, loafers. This pair of loafers. This pair of loafers I've had since 2021 and they're still not broken in. And I told myself, I told myself that 2023 was going to be the year that I was not going to quit regardless of the pain, the suffering, the blisters. I wasn't going to quit till they were finally broken in. But they broke me. They broke me again. And now I'm working on the very plausible theory that all loafer makers, including trickers, these are a pair of trickers, they are, they're all actually blister plaster manufacturers in disguise. And they've just all orchestrated this, this resurgence in wearing loafers to, to boost their sales. All the Lawrence Lossmans, the James Harrises, the Chris Echeverias, and I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, uh, the guy who, who founded Blackstock and Weber, and all the other very stylish dudes who seem to be completely fine getting about their day uh, wearing loafers, they're all internet, and they've somehow numbed their feet. Um, anyway, the, the only way that I can see that these things are ever, ever going to be comfortable is if you buy enough of these things and make a full-blown sock out of them. Then, then you can get about your day. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is fuck these things and enter, enter, Astroflex. That's a weird transition, I know, but uh, let me explain. Astroflex, and I'll just get rid of these because Astroflex. Astroflex, I'd never heard of them before, which I found weird, which I still find weird because they are they're sold in many of the stores that I frequent. Uh, they have all got that uh, history, heritage and craft that I'm always droning on about. And they have their own take on some very classic men's footwear like I don't know, Chelsea's, loafers, desert boots, and so on. I don't know, they just flew under my radar. I, I don't think they are one of these if you know, you know brands, but I, either way I didn't know, but now I do know and I want to know more. So here is what I know, or what I found out. Well, from the source, I didn't find out too much, actually. For a brand that is apparently everywhere, they are not so big and tooting their own horn, which I, I do appreciate. But uh, here's what I could kind of piece together. They are a family-owned business. They have been several generations in the business, presumably since, since 1820. They started off as a collection of smaller workshops and they were making very simple wooden soled shoes with a leather upper. So they were, they were making clogs, basically. After the First World War, when industrialization in footwear in that area started to ramp up, they switched up to making different styles using the... Stay closed, please. Otherwise, you're gonna ruin the surprise. Yeah, they switched up to making different styles using the, the ideal method, which I think is a way of stitching the uppers to the sole of the shoe, uh, but we're going to look at that later. Yeah, that's what I found out from, from the website and having a poke around the interwebs. But they happened to be showing at the same show that 316 was showing at in Paris and I got to talk to their agent. And my first question to him was, okay, so you've got Italian footwear, you've got amazing leather, you've got these classic styles. Usually that comes with a pretty hefty price tag, but these things are... I wouldn't say cheap, but they're very affordable. So what gives? He had a little bit of a chuckle about that. And with the air of a man who's been asked that question a lot, probably several times just that hour, he replied that, well, since it's a company that's been doing it for so damn long, they have got very, very good, very efficient at making a pair of shoes. They've refined the whole process, the whole supply chain to the nth degree. So they can offer this amazing footwear at a very, very reasonable price, which, which makes sense. Okay, but anyway, that's, that's all well and good. Let's actually unbox the shoes and have a look at them because they are falling out of the box. Anyway. Okay, we have got a blurb that basically says exactly the same thing that I found on the website. It would have been a lot easier if I just had a look at these first. And then here, are the shoes. I went for the, the Pantoflex loafer in this sort of tan brown full grain leather. Okay, let me get the, this right because they come in, in various different various different variations. They come in, in some variations. And I'm gonna read this directly off the screen so I can get it right first time. There's a stone color in suede that comes with the crepe sole. Then there is this color with the leather sole. Then there's a new book 
also with the leather sole, and then the darker brown with the rubber sole, which I think is sold out, unfortunately. Also, worth mentioning right about now that these are an exclusive with Huckberry. Huckberry being the sponsor of this video. They were kind enough to sponsor three videos in total. This video and the next one, obviously, is just very, very, very late. There was a slight, a slight, 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 slight issue with, with homelessness, which um, I'm happy to say has been resolved. But it just means that my upload schedule has just been completely knocked out of whack, completely. And it's unfortunately going to continue. Uh, but more on that another time. The, the other thing I wanted to say is that, that I didn't mention in the last video is, I, I've been looking a lot on their, their blog, which they call their journal, but potato, potato. There's a lot of good information on there, like really, really good information on there that's gonna help you along your sartorial journey which is, is a wanky way to put it, but yeah, the information's good and it's really useful. So go and check that out. I've left a link to that down below. I've left a link to these down below. And again, Huckberry, thank you very, very much for sponsoring the videos. But anyway, back to the shoes. Now, they call this a loafer. I'm not really sure what constitutes a loafer. It, I presume it's just a pair of slip-on shoes, so this definitely qualifies. But for me, I see this as being most, more of a, of a slipper. I, I say that because I wanted a pair of the Viber slippers for a very, very long time. But I am buggered if I'm paying $550 for something that I've heard isn't really made for human feet. So this is very, very similar. And if I'm honest, I think I like these a little bit better. You see, I, I like that these are just a simple, refined pair of shoes, but not overly refined. They're, they're certainly very different from the penny loafers that I showed you earlier and hopefully different means that they're wearable. But yeah, they are a pretty simple, refined pair of shoes that stand in good contrast to either my Birkenstocks or my Fights, which have been my, my other go-to summer shoes this year. So that means that there's definitely a place for these in my wardrobe. Okay, details. So from the bottom up, there is a leather sole. I am quite partial to a leather sole. I, I like the, the silhouette, the kind of refined, minimalist silhouette that it gives. I will say that it takes some getting used to. If, if you need to run away a lot, then this is definitely not the, the pair of shoes for you. This tends to be quite slippy, so just be warned about that. Then, okay, so there's the outer leather sole, and there seems to be two layers of, of leather here. There's the outer sole, and there's the not outer sole. Yeah, okay, this isn't Karl Marowski, this isn't Rose Anvil, I don't know what these things are called, and apparently I'm too lazy to look them up. Right, the outer sole and the not outer sole have been stitched onto the uppers. And it looks like the upper has been kind of like splayed out, and then that has been stitched through onto the not outer sole. And that is what I think they define as their ideal method of construction. I just know it to be a, a very durable, very cost-effective way of doing things. As I said, it may not be the most refined, but I think it suits this particular style of shoe. And it means, I presume that this is one aspect that means that this shoe can come in at a very, very reasonable price. I mean, for a pair of Italian-made shoes, natural veg tanned leather, uh, they've got quite good sustainability credentials. Yeah, they come in at just shy of $200, which it's, that's a good price. Like really, that's a very, very good price for a shoe of this caliber. Then going back down to the bottom, you have a stacked leather heel. At least, is that leather? Not too sure. It looks a little bit too uniform, actually. There might be this kind of like fiberboard stuff that, that's used in shoes, which acts kind of like leather, but I don't think it's as durable as leather and it's a bit cheaper. I can't speak to that. I'm certainly not gonna chop these things in half. I, it might be that thing that just adds or subtracts some of the costs of making these shoes. Then there is rubber on that stacked, maybe leather heel. That means that these are a little bit less deadly when you're walking down some, some steps. Then the uppers themselves, that is a full grain veg tanned leather and it's fully lined also with leather. 
both the, the outer and the, the lining, they're so, so buttery soft. I, I really can't imagine I'm gonna have any breaking period with these whatsoever. On the inside, well, there is the packing paper. Don't need that. But there is also a removable insole. Again, leather, and then with an orange rubber squashy bit. And yes, that, that, is, that is the technical term for this. Okay, right, that, that, that's, the, that's the details. Probably the, the worst shoe review you have ever seen. But those are the details which don't actually mean too much if they don't fit. So let's see if they fit. All right, so I went for a size 42 in these, and I'm normally a size 43. I, I know from bitter experience that loafers have to fit pretty, pretty snug. And Huckberry do recommend that if you are in between sizes, then you should size down. So I took a bit of a, of a punt and yeah, size down. Uh, let's see. Oh, and if you do want to start wearing loafers, then definitely, 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 definitely invest in a shoehorn. Okay, that worked out perfectly. These fit like a glove. And yeah, they're a little bit snug for sure, but with that, with that buttery soft leather, then that's gonna soften up really quick. I think within, within a couple of weeks, maybe even less actually, these are gonna be very, very comfortable. Okay, so they fit, and I won't be needing these anymore. Yeah, so they fit, but just as important as if they fit or not is how am I going to style them? Actually, I need that blister packet back because I was using it as a tripod. Everything has its use. Okay, so how am I intending to style these? Well, with this, with this beautiful brown tone, I think it's gonna go extremely, extremely well with, well, definitely with Stonewash jeans. You saw that a second ago. But I think it's gonna work equally well with with most things in my wardrobe actually, it's gonna go really nicely with, with my olive pants, my khakis, it's gonna go really well with a pair of Ecru jeans. Uh, yeah, I, this is gonna be a very versatile addition to my wardrobe, so uh, let's, let's get into it, let's have a look. Yeah, works beautifully with my olive pants. I stonewashed for sure. The Ecru's definitely works, works just as well. For silhouettes, I think that it's going to work best with my more straight-fitting pants, maybe with a few turn-ups, and even e even wider if there's a bit of a taper or a pin roll. What I don't think works all that well are my really wide long pants. They they tend to get a bit lost in there, and if I turn them up to show a bit of ankle, uh, that turn-up gets a, a bit bulky. Although. I don't know, maybe that does work. Um, let me know what you think. Anyway, these are gonna be worn extensively with, with my blue jeans, uh, with my olive cargos and my fatigues. Probably the Ecru cords as well, actually. And we're gonna see about these worker pants. Right, that is the Astroflex Pantoflex loafer. In conclusion, well, that's my, my summer shoes sorted completely. I, I think I'm, I'm very well covered for what's left of the summer, which Today doesn't look like very much. And in more conclusions, this is a very, very well made pair of shoes at an extremely good price point. And what you're getting for, for the money is quite astonishing. It, it, it is. Also, they fill a spot in my wardrobe that has previously been unoccupied. So that is a step in the right direction to, to this whole thing of being more cerebral with the way, way, way I dress. And I think the most important thing, I am gonna have fun with these. I'm gonna have fun styling these, I'm gonna have fun watching the way that they complement outfits, exploring a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm delighted with these. So thank you again to, to Huckberry for, for sponsoring the video. It's, it's so very appreciated that you take care and you help out and you support us smaller channels, I know that you've supported uh, a few other guys out there as well. I think this is great. Hopefully we can give you back some value as well. Speaking of, links down below to, to the shoes for sure, also to the other PCs that I mentioned. If I can't get those exact PCs, I've found something as close to equivalent as I possibly could. 
And what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I think that's it. I've been talking at you for far too long, as always. So, that just leaves me to say, guys, I hope all of you are happy and healthy out there. Let's get the shoes together for the, for the final shot. Yeah, I hope all of you guys are happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves, hope you're taking care of each other, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. This is gonna come at some point, I promise.